In this lesson, we're going to find the greatest common factor using factor trees. There's three steps to finding the greatest common factor using this method. Step number one is to write the prime factorization for each number. We're going to use factor trees to write the prime factorization. And we're going to make sure that we write it in extended form, not with exponents, because this will make it easier to find the common factors. Step two is then to find the common factors and circle them. And step three is just to multiply these common factors together, and then we'll have our greatest common factor. So let's take a look at these three steps in action as we find the greatest common factor for 360 and 540. So we're going to start with the number 360, and we're going to use factor trees to write the prime factorization. So 360, I know this number ends in a zero, so I can multiply it by 10. So I'm going to start with 10 times 36 is 360. I know that 10 is not prime and neither is 36, so I need to continue factoring each of these numbers. So 10 has two factors of 5 and 2 because 5 times 2 is 10. And 36 has two factors of 6 and 6. So 5 is prime, 2 is prime, but 6 and 6 are not prime. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring down the 5 and I'm going to bring down the 2 because they're prime numbers. But 6 is composite and 6 we can say the factors are 3 times 2 because 3 times 2 is 6. And I'm going to do that for both 6's. So now 3 is prime and 2 is prime. So now my whole last row here is prime. And that means that I can then write the prime factorization. So I have 3 2's and I'm going to write it out. So 2 times 2 times 2. And then I have 2 3's and I have 5. So the prime factorization for 360 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. Okay? So now we need to do the same thing for the number 540. We need to find the prime factorization using a factor tree. So again, 540 ends in a 0, so I'm going to use 10 times 54. 10 times 54 is 540. Neither one of these numbers are prime, so I'm going to continue factoring with 5 times 2. Now we've already done this, so we know that 5 times 2 is 10, and 5 and 2 are prime. But now we need to go over to 54, and we need to think of the factors for 54, and that would be 9 times 6 is 54. 9 is not prime, and neither 6. So I'm going to bring down my 5 and bring down my 2 as they are prime. The factors of 9 would be 3 times 3. And my factors for 6 would be 3 times 2. So I know that 3 and 2 are prime. So now I have my last row here as a set of prime numbers. And I can go ahead and write the prime factorization which is 2 times 2, since I have two twos, and then three threes, so 3 times 3 times 3, and then 1 5, so times 5. So this is the prime factorization for 540. Now, step 2 had said that I need to find the common prime factors. So common prime factors means the prime factors that are the same for both numbers. So I'm going to start by looking at the 2's. 540 has two twos, and so does 360. It has 3, but I can't use this 2 because 540 doesn't have another prime 2. So I'm going to say that both of them have 2 times 2. If I look at my 3's, 360 has two 3's, and 540 has three 3's. So they both have at least two threes as their prime factors. So I can do two times two times three times three. And then they both have five as a prime factor. So I can do two times, um, or so times five. So my prime 
my common prime factors are 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. And if I take these common prime factors and I multiply them together, I get an answer of 180. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 9 is 36. And if you do 36 times 5, you'll get an answer of 180. So that means that 180 is the greatest common factor for 360 and 540. Okay, so that's finding the greatest common factor using factor trees and prime factorization to find it. So 180 is the greatest common factor for 360 and 540.